Everybody, this is Honey Pat. You're welcome to my kitchen. And this is our spiritual, <laughs> part of our spiritual family. Reverend PJ is the cameraman. <laughs> Yay! Yay! All right. And, and Connie, Connie yeah. is my cleanup after me, man. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, welcome. Uh, we're going, tonight we're going to be making beef, barley, and mushroom soup. However, it has a name. Uh, we named it because of my son-in-law, John. When, whenever all the kids come and gather, I always make something in the crock pot so that no matter what time people float in, there's something that, to put in their bellies, they can have it. So John was here and he was out making business calls and he usually comes in about nine o'clock at night. And so I had this stew in the uh, crock pot and he took it, served himself, sat down at the table, and he started eating, and he said, oh my God, I think I hear the angels sing. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, it's stew, <laughs> you know. And he proceeded to get several more helpings. So from that point on, this has been called the, uh, the angel sing stew. But you can judge for yourself when you make it. All right. I will do that. The first thing that I do, because it is a crock pot dish, I get all the stuff ready that in the crock pot first and uh, turn it on so that can be heating and uh, it gets a quick start. So. And do you turn it on high or low? I have it on high. Okay. Uh, once it begins to bubble, then I may turn it on low depending on which crock pot I use. Mm -hmm. Do you know your crock pot? You just do what your crock pot tells you to do. Okay, 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 so what do you put in there? Okay, the first, what I put in this, and I do this mainly because I'm real efficient about my movements. Uh, I just put in the liquid, which is, or some of the liquid. So this is a quart of beef broth, or beef stock if you can get it. So we'll put that in there. Also, I peeled three carrots, and they were pretty long, I might be putting four in, three, this, it's stew. Use your own judgment, and you can add the things that you like. Carrots, potatoes. So this is uh, three carrots, put that in there. Two bay leaves, some thyme. I'm putting in about a teaspoon. Okay. Sometimes I get it from my garden, but it was raining and I didn't want to go out. And then I put in about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And then I put, putting in some barley. Uh, I use barley a lot in my soups. Uh, and then I alternate because my husband prefers a cubed potato. So you could eliminate the barley and you could peel two potatoes, cube them up and put them in. But I'm going to put about uh, three quarters of a cup. This is a half cup measure. So I'm going to put that in and about half of that. So we're going to let that go. Bubble, bubble, toilet trouble. <laughs> you put the lid on it? I will later. <laughs> and yeah, when we're, when we're ready to shut her up. Okay, That's so what. you can move over, Kenny. So now we're going to come over here and we're going to uh, cook the meat. And one of the reasons that we do this when you're cooking a stew is that when you um, brown the meat, it seals in the juices, so that makes the meat more tender and, um, and keeps it from getting tough and stringy. And the flour uh, serves as a thickening agent, so rather than thicken it later, we can do it then. So what I have here is a cup of flour, and I'm going to add to it about a teaspoon. Uh, if you don't like spicy things, you may want to take less, but uh, it really makes a difference in the flavor. So let's put about a teaspoon of that stuff in there. And what is that stuff? What's the seasoning? This is Tony Chachere's Cajun seasoning. Oh, Cajun seasoning. All right. So there, there's many brands and they're very similar. So if you don't have this, you probably have some other Cajun seasoning on hand. 
So we're gonna stir that up so that'll be distributed throughout. And then when I toss the, the meat in the flour, I like to use this instrument, it's called a spider. Sure. And you'll see why. Where do you find the spider? Uh, I found this on the wall at Central Market. And what is the, what's the meat that you're putting in? Beef stew meat. It's so that's what it is, it's already cut up? Beef yeah. stew meat, okay. Now sometimes, when I, uh, if I just do this for, and it's only for Glenn and I, and I don't do it in the crock pot, I do it in a small saucepan, and I get the, uh, they have the uh, beef already portioned out into little strips at Costco, and I get those and freeze them separately, and I just take one of those strips and cut it and cube it, because that's enough stew uh, for my husband and I because after all there's just so much stew you can stand. <laughs> so look at this. Can you see this how we're tossing this uh, meat in here? And it's getting thoroughly coated. I don't have to get my hands dirty. Good. And here's the reason why I use the spiral. <laughs> I take a little bit and I sort of shake it. See how that's shaking? And you don't have to get an excess of flour in there. Okay. So we're gonna cook that for a little while. How long is a little while? Till it gets brown on the outside. It doesn't matter because it's gonna go in the crock pot and cook for four hours. Okay. So you're not gonna die. flour because in a little bit we're going to take the meat out and put it on a plate and saute the rest of the vegetables that go in there. Mm -hmm. So we're, oh. we're going to let that cook. Can you see that? Thing? Beautiful. Okay. So we're going to let that cook. Just stand here a little while and let it cook. Now the, when I was preparing for this and thought about, I made this stew. It's a stew that I made all the time it's just a utilitarian dish that you don't think anything about it you, everybody in the planet has a stew recipe it's just a go-to recipe everybody fixes it differently but yet my son-in-law came in and thought it was the greatest thing ever so what that brings home to me is that we don't know how we are angels unaware just doing something that we normally do right. if we hold the door open for someone yes. elderly, older than me, of course. Of course. Uh, or just smile at a stranger or offer the census taker like David a glass of water. Those are just things that are second nature to us. And we don't know how that may affect someone. Mm -hmm. You, you don't know when you're on the elevator if you say something that that is speaking to you to say uh, something kind to a stranger on the elevator. You don't know, but, but you have been the one to stop that person from committing suicide because you cared enough to speak to them. I know Reverend PJ talked about how uh, she was in uh, Bed Bath and Beyond. We'll never forget this story. And uh, she was there, and it was Christmas time. People were waiting in line to get their gifts. And there was a lady there that was just, tears were just rolling down her face. And Reverend PJ didn't know what the problem was. But she walked silently up beside her, took her by the hand and held her hand until she felt like a moment of need was passed. Did you say anything and walk on? Now I know that that changed that in life. So I'm going to move this now and let it cook over here because I have one already ready. I always 
like to keep a glass lid on things when I'm cooking that's flatter because you can still see how they cook and uh, and it doesn't get all over your splatter on your arms or anything. Okay. Now here's the one that I've already cooked a little bit. And that looks good to me. I'm going to take that out. Thank you, Connie. This is why we need Connie. <laughs> one of the many reasons. <laughs> so I'm just going to take this out, put it on the plate. And set it aside. Yeah. And you notice that I have not thrown away my flour because I'm going to use it a little bit of it in a minute. I, I've had some oil in here. The meat sucked it all up. So I'm going to add some more. It's olive oil that I had in there. I want to have enough to saute the vegetables. So in here, I have one onion, five cloves of garlic, and we're going to saute those. Now, you'll notice that I have this wooden spoon that has a flat edge. Let me see. Thank you. And the reason why I prefer this over anything else is because you can scrape up the bits. When you add that back into your stew, it, it's a lot of flavor. So that, this way I can scrape up the bits without damaging my, my pan. Okay, those onions and the garlic, the five cloves of garlic. I cook. Now I'm going to add in the mushrooms. I just got a small box of mushrooms. Uh, and we're going to let that cook a little while. So the mushrooms uh, sort of cook down and, and begin to release their liquid. The other thing I wanted to tell you about if you'll notice that these um, little onions are chopped up real fine, and the reason I do it that way is because the smaller the uh, pieces of onion are in this, the more flavor they emit. Oh. It's not being um, hoarded within the, a clunky piece of onion. Yeah. You know, the thing about... Uh, being, you don't know how you're being used as an instrument. This is my personal belief. I believe that we are each like crystals that God can use to emit, just like the radio waves and the old timey radios, and they had little crystals in them. I think that that's what we are as spiritual beings. Maybe not necessarily as a physical being, but as a spiritual being, we are absorbing what we understand God to be, what we understand the goodness of God, and then that goes through us and radiates out to others. So that's why I did. in the first time that we did this cooking show, I admonished everybody, be sure that when you're cooking, you're doing it with love. Oh, uh, yes. Don't, don't be resentful when you have to cook. If you can, if you have to be resentful, Get a Stouffer's frozen lasagna, for God's sake. <laughs> because this is really a very vivid uh, energy that you're putting into the food. Very good. Excellent. So you see how I'm scraping that up? Yeah. And okay. now comes the flour. I'm going to get about the equivalent of maybe two tablespoons of this flour. And remember, it's already been seasoned with that uh, Cajun seasoning. You don't need salt and pepper because the, in the Cajun seasoning, it's, it's just all salt and cayenne pepper, basically. Now, we're going to 
let that continue to cook as the uh, mushrooms are releasing their liquid. Thank you. Can you see over, over my shoulder how yep. that, see, that flower is just being absorbed? Yep. In Cajun cooking, it's called making a roux. A roux, okay. And now, we're going to add about a cup of wine. I don't ever cook in the plant that tells you only use wine that you're willing to drink. <laughs> don't, don't use some cheap grocery store uh, cooking wine that has salt in it. And this is going to help those bits come up a little more. And get all those scraped up because that's going to bring flavor to your dish. And so you can do this at lunch, put it in the crock pot, walk away, and you're finished cleaning, chopping vegetables. All you have to do is wait for dinner time and serve it up. Okay. Now see how that uh, wine sauce is beginning to thicken? Oh yeah, it looks like gravy now. Mm -hmm. That's what I call it. You got to gravy it up. <laughs> and now, this was the thing I think that made the difference when I made the soup for John. I, I was out of uh, the tomato paste that's in the squirt tube, and I didn't have any tomato sauce. I did have a V8, and so I added the V8. And that seems to be what made the difference and this stew um, in the in the completed flavor. I never would have thought yeah. to be, but I never would have had that in my house. That's the thing, me either. See, it's, it has all these vegetable flavors in it, and uh, doesn't it have? Doesn't V8 have a kick too? I think there is. I think there is one that does. Yeah, I don't think they, the yeah, regular one doesn't. Have any, mm -mm. Any uh, no hot sauce or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember long ago, uh, I had a restaurant, and it was a chain that I had bought a franchise to, and they had a little um, Demitasse cup of, of a clear broth, and all it was was V8 juice, chicken broth, and dill. But it made a very tasty little Demitasse cup of uh, of liquid like a real thin broth but it's very flavorful that they drank it yeah you drank it with a little uh in the in the south i know all of you have, have lived in the south they have these little cheese wafers that have cayenne pepper oh. and and pecans and you so it was served with two of those and your little demitas demitas um, thing of, of this broth broth with vodka or just broth? just but the broth was chicken broth <laughs> V8 juice and dill. Okay, all right, interesting. Now the thing about what wine and the, the reason I was anxious to make sure I had tomatoes in the uh, sauce was because wine and or the tomato juice or the to any tomato product breaks down your meat and tenderizes oh, it. Oh, okay. So Very now good. we're gonna put this back in. Make sure you get all the juices from it. Let me get a hot uh -oh. pan. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why I didn't put the lid on the crock pot. Okay, because, ah, you bring it over? Yeah, because I was going to, I'm going to take this and go pour this into the crock pot. Okay. Crap. I didn't say that. <laughs> okay. Let's scrape it down. I 
I don't burn myself. Ta-da! There you have it. In four hours, dinner's ready. All right. Nice. And that's it? That's it. Wow. So cool. And now Yay. I'm going to dip some out and so you can see what it looks like all finished. All right. Because just for you, peoples, I made one ahead of time. <laughs> and this is why I say there's just so much stew you can eat. <laughs> Bring it back over to the downward facing dog camera. Okay. <laughs> there, do you see that? Hang on. Ah. I have to put it over the oven if you want them to see it. Over there with the stove. That, yeah, that right there. Okay. Okay. And there you have. Over more? Well, to, the, to, the center of the, uh, to the center of that ring where you had the uh, pot. That, that ring is hot. Okay, so lift it up so you don't have to sit right on it. There you go. There Perfect. You go. They can see it really well right there. Yeah. Perfect. That's beautiful. That's what it's going to look like. It. That is wonderful. And there you have the Angel Sing Stew. Woo! Yay! And, which you can change your vegetables. You can change from barley to potatoes. You're a creative being on this planet. So just however you're inspired is right. There is no wrong way. And there you it's have all it. perfect and divine. And John... John Perper, here you is, go. This is for your chef because John is going to take this video and give it to the chef at his restaurant so they can have it there in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Oh, all right. I know who that is. Yay. Thank you. All right, and that is Cooking with Honey Pat. Yeah. Woo!